Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. As promised in my last video, I am back with the Tasteal Tote Sew Along. Here she is in all of her super bright beauty. I use the Prickly Pear Cacti uh, Succulent Print from Fabric Funhouse, and I paired it with this hot pink. Um, I should have looked up what color this was before I got on here. I think it might be Sangria, not entirely sure, but it matches the, the little pink berries or whatever those are um perfectly in the top corks so yeah i decided to go big also this um this color combo was a huge hit whenever i made the my mini box tote so i figured why not bring it back for a bigger bag anyway so this is the size of it you can see it's a it's a large bag um i designed it to be used as a work bag thinking a laptop you know and files and everything else that you would need for a work day would fit here perfectly um, if you know, you could use it for a one, like an overnight trip or really just a daily bag. It's a great size, especially if you're accustomed to using a large bag. Um, the thing that I love about this bag and the thing that, um, made me write the pattern is this recessed slip pocket. It's almost like a hidden pocket because if you didn't know that it was there, you wouldn't know that it was there. It's just the way during construction, it, um, allows everything to lay really, really nicely and yeah so that's like my favorite and it's cool because it has a nice finished edge in there no raw edges um that one was a brain teaser for me to figure out so i hope that you enjoy that process um if you want to you can put a second one along the back here uh but as written the tall tote which is this one only has the one on the front and then on the inside you can see I have designed the pattern so that the inside nests nicely and there's no sagging or bagginess in there. And it comes with an optional sunglasses holder here. And then this pocket with the front, with the fun pocket, ah, it's kind of far down there, but the pocket facing there. And another thing is the way that I do my pocket with the pocket facing, again, there are, <laughs> there are no raw edges in there. Sorry, I'd, you know whatever. I'm not the most smooth operator there is. But anyways, yeah, so it's a pretty easy bag. There's nothing like super ingenious about it, but it is easy to customize. It's great for panels because this bottom section is so large. And then obviously the more expensive cork or anything that you want to showcase does really well at the top section. Um, it is written for any self-healing edge textile, but with a little bit of ingenuity you can make it work with all cottons. The only reason I don't say that it's not across the board for all cottons is because of this front pocket, because it does leave that fold raw. So if you can figure that out, then it, this would be perfect for an all cotton bag. Um, it comes in two sizes. Oh, that one's got a bunch of stuff in front of it, but it's got the tall and then I've got the wide. They both have the front pocket. The wide has two inside pockets and then of course the optional sunglasses section. Um, that's really about it. It comes together super quickly. I would love to know what you think. Let me know about the video. Uh, be sure to give me a like, thumbs up, all that fun stuff. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so then you will know every time I put out a new video. Until then, happy sewing. Before we get started, I'm just gonna go through everything that I have cut and ready to go. These are my straps. This is my exterior top and then exterior bottom. And then I have my exterior top and bottom pocket pieces. And then these big pieces are my lining, the interior. And then this is gonna be my interior pocket. I have my sunglasses pocket cut, and this is just raw cork. Then I have my zipper overlay, and I have my zipper. So, the first thing that we need to do, on step two, you fuse and you're going to trim your lining piece so that it nests nicely inside of the exterior. So as you can see, I already have mine interfaced and I used Pellin 808, but any medium interfacing will work great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half, long ways, and then we need to taper to the bottom. So because my fabric is directional, let me scooch over here. Because my fabric is directional, this is the top here. So I'm gonna just make note of that. And I'm gonna line up my side edges and line it up on my ruler. 
and then grab my ruler and then I'm going to angle the ruler so it's going to start at the top corner of the top of the interior and then I'm going to angle it in a half an inch so that'll create my taper and then I'm going to cut that off on both Just mimic that on this side here And so now we have our lining pieces prepped and ready and I'm just going to move all this out of the way and then we're going to start by working on our straps and we're going to create rolled handles. So the easiest way that I found to do this is lay your strap out long ways and then you're going to mark right down the center of it. Using my handy dandy pen that I got from Lauren at Mormino, or Mormino, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And so I'm just marking a line all the way down the center. I'm going to do that on both of my straps. Not sure what happened, but the video cut off. But what I did was I just added double stick tape on either side of my line about an eighth of an inch. You don't have to be too precious here. You just wanna make sure that it is on either side of the line, unless you have a machine that doesn't mind sewing through double stick tape. Mine isn't a huge fan of it, but it will still sew through it. But yeah, just to mitigate any extra um, tackiness, I do it one eighth of an inch on either side of the center line. And now what we're gonna do is peel up our tape And then you're just gonna fold this long edge to meet that center line that we drew before. So now if you wanted to, you could butt these two long edges together on that center line. But what I like to do is just leave a really, really tiny gap here because then when you fold it to make the rolled handle, it gives it just a little bit of fold space in there without crunching all four layers together. And I just find that it makes it a little bit easier to maneuver. But again, you can butt it all the way up if you'd like to. So I'm just gonna repeat the folding on this other strap. Okie doke. So now the next thing that we want to do is flip the strap so it's right side up and we need to mark four inches from the bottom short edge and then at four and a half as well. And I'm going to do this with a removable line. So I'm going to use my chalk. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this pen is removable. It could be, but I don't want to find out on this pink cork. So I'm just going to mark four and then four and a half. And so that is 10 centimeters and 11 and a half centimeters. Flip and do the same on the other side. So four inches or 10 centimeters and then four and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeters. And I'm going to get my clips. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to Oh, well, oh, let me back up for a second. If you wanted to, this is optional. You could sew down the center. So just on the inside of the long folded edges here, 
you could sew down the center lines on both of the straps if you'd like to. And what that'll do is that'll give you a stitched seam line on the inside after this is folded. I personally like the way that that looks, um, but I'm going to skip it on this just because it's not necessary. But again, if you wanted to, stitch down the center before moving on to this next step, which is you're going to fold your long edges in on each other to enclose this gap that we left. And then lining up your edges, your folded edges, you're just gonna clip all the way down until you reach that other, this other um, four and a half or 11 and a half centimeter line. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our machines and we're gonna stitch. We're gonna start at that second line and using an eighth inch seam allowance, you're gonna stitch all the way down these folded raw edges or the folded edges. And we're gonna just, uh, we've gotta be sure to backstitch really well right here because that's gonna be a high stress point when the strap is folded open. But so backstitching really well, stitch all the way down this open edge until you get to the second line here and then repeat it for the other strap. So you want to be sure that you have a full bobbin before you get started on this. You don't want to run out in the or in the middle of sewing this. And I am just going to stitch one eighth of a seam allowance down each side. I'm using a size four stitch length, Guterman um, 120, narrow 120 thread, and a size 16 needle. Now we have really nice rolled handles and they're nice and neat and nice and thick as well because it's four layers in there. Okay, so we are now on step four of the pattern. I have one exterior top and one exterior bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I need to lay my strap onto the exterior top. And if you do have double stick tape, this is a great time to use it just to hold everything in place. And I'm just gonna put double stick tape about three quarters of the way up from this raw shore edge just maybe about two inches, just enough to hold it in place. And the reason I'm going three quarters of the way up or an inch up is because if you glue this bottom section to the exterior top, it'll just make the top stitching later on a little bit harder. So I've got my tape on this side and I'm gonna measure over um, if I'm doing the tall taste steel, and so if you're doing the tall, you're gonna use the measurement that's in the pattern. And then if you're doing the wide, use that measurement. So be, reference the pattern for the, um, for where you need to place these. And you wanna be sure that you overlap by a half an inch. And we do that because later I'm gonna add rivets here just to add some stability to the strap. So once the bag is full, I know that my customer is not gonna pop their strap. All right, so now we've got our strap 
in place and we're just gonna leave it taped for now. And then you grab your exterior bottom and you're gonna sandwich it right sides together. And I'm gonna put a couple clips just to keep everything in place. And now this is, I'm going to show you how to do the, um, the slip pocket for the front. And so you need to grab your exterior top and exterior bottom pocket pieces. And so what we're going to do is after you've created this sandwich here, you'll see the strap sticking out from the bottom. And then we need to lay our exterior top like so. So you're facing it, so it's right side down, and you're facing it away from the exterior um, top and bottom. And I'm gonna overlap it. We'll see, look, and so you'll see that it meets up at the ends of your straps here. And if that isn't happening, then you need to remeasure where your straps are because your pocket top and bottom should be the same width. So I'm gonna overlap this um, a half an inch on top of here. And if you have, whoa, everything sticks to these, but if you have sew tights, these are super handy when you're doing this step because it just holds everything in place because clips won't reach up. So we're gonna flip carefully. And again, I'm using directional fabric on my lining, so I'm making sure that this is facing up. And so same thing, I'm gonna take my exterior bottom and on the exterior bottom here, I'm gonna lay it and then again, overlap it by half an inch. And then you should have this bit of a gap here and that's, uh, you'll see later when we get to that, why it's like that. So the next thing we need to do is go and top stitch this all together. And I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and just sew all the way across. And when I get to the inside of my straps down here, I'm going to back stitch really well. And then from the inside of this strap to the inside of this strap, I'm going to switch to a basting stitch. And then I'm going to go back to a normal size stitch as soon as I butt up against the inside of the strap. And I'm going to back stitch again and then continue stitching across. I accidentally hit or pulled on the bottom when I was pulling my sew tight out and it made everything all wonky. Just gonna line everything back up again and keep it moving. So here I am at the inside of my strap. I added a couple of stay stitches here and then I'm gonna switch to a basting stitch. And you can feel the straps in here when you're sewing. So just, you know, feel what you're doing. Okay, so now I'm back to the inside of this other strap here and I'm gonna switch back to my smaller stitch length and I'm gonna add a couple stitches and then keep sewing. So now this is our sandwich here. Sorry, I don't have a lot of room right here, but this is our sandwich, what it looks like from the inside, the top and the bottom. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to butterfly the seam open. So I like to do that from the back and you're going to flip the, this, uh, the cork seams. You're going to butterfly those. And within that seam, you'll notice that the lining pocket top is flipped up and the lining pocket bottom is flipped down and you're going to leave your straps facing towards the bottom. So just finger press it really well. And then I like to top stitch from the top side. So I'm gonna flip it back over. 
And now this can be a bit jumbly here. So you just have to really feel everything. And you're gonna have to go under while you're sewing and you will you might have to butterfly your seams back open, but just go slow, take your time, and you won't have any issues. So again, I'm back at my four inch seam allowance and I'm just top stitching on both sides of my exterior top and bottom, uh, one eighth. So I just got to the inside of my strap again, and then just, again, for added security, I'm gonna throw in a couple extra stitches there before sewing over the front of the pocket, or the middle of the pocket here. And now, because you're top stitching, you're not gonna baste again. You only basted before. When we're top stitching, we're continuing with our regular stitch length. Now I'm at the end, so I'm just gonna pivot and then continue top stitching down the exterior bottom. All right, so this is what it looks like now. You can see it's nicely top stitched. And this is what it looks like from the back. I'll hold it like this for you. So you can see the reason that we made the pocket that way is so that there aren't any raw cotton edges in here so that it doesn't fray with use. And then this, this folded corks um, piece just makes a nice edge on the inside of the pocket for whenever you're looking inside, which I don't know how many people look inside pockets, but I do. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is fold this exterior pocket top down and you'll see that it lines up with the exterior pocket bottom. And I'm just gonna finger press and then clip just to keep it out of the way. And then now what I'm gonna do is flip my panel back over and what I wanna do is top stitch these straps. And so I'm gonna start down here at this line on the seam, and I'm gonna stitch up to that drawn line that we drew earlier, stitch across and then back down, and I'm gonna repeat for this side. The reason that you don't top stitch this in a prior step is because if you did, then you would have had a hard time um, holding this uh, excess down whenever you're top stitching these two panels whenever you're butterfly top stitching. And that might not make sense, but if you try it and you try to top stitch first and then try to butterfly, you'll know exactly what I mean. I did it many times the hard way. So do as I say, not as I do on that. Okay, so I'm just lining up my stitch line with the previously made stitch line. And then again, I'm just gonna sew all the way up. and then across. And so this is what it looks like. Now I'm just gonna repeat that for the other side. gonna trim my threads here and then this is what the front panel should look like 
And now, since I'm over here, I'm just gonna flip this back over and I'm gonna finish this pocket. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start stitching up here and stitch down, across, and then back up. Oh, this way. And so when you do this, you wanna flip this out of the way. Another thing that I like to do, because this pocket edge meets up with your strap, it can be a little challenging, so you have to taper in to create this sewn edge. Or what you can do is with the exterior bottom right side up, you're gonna flip that up and you can see, you can sew right next to this um, seam line here. I'm just gonna sew in about a quarter of an inch and then I'll pivot and continue sewing. I'm just going to sew up to the top here. And voila. Now I'll show you how to open this up to access that pocket. Because right now it's, it's sewn shut. Grab your seam ripper. And what we're going to do to open this pocket is you're just going to fold it to expose those stitches in there. And then you're just going to very, very carefully unpick you wanna be sure that you're not digging into your pocket back here though. So when you're unpicking, just be very careful, go lightly. And actually, I don't know if you know this, but the reason that you have this side of your seam ripper is so that you can insert it into the seam and seam rip without fear of cutting the fabric underneath. And so I just picked out the seams from the strap to strap and then there's your pocket. And so you'll want to go back and pick out your threads here. And that's why I switched to a basting stitch, because if you're using leather or cork or any other self-healing edge textile, a lot of times you can see the perforations from the needle. So I just tried to lessen that by using a basting stitch. And the reason that this pattern isn't written for all cottons is because of this pocket here the way that it is done because if you used all cottons then this inside edge would be open and you would it could fray so if you wanted to use all cottons oops, you could but you would just have to do some brainstorming and uh, navigate that pocket there okay so now the front panel is done i'm going to add my tag here which you don't have to watch. Um, and then we're gonna do the other side. Oh, actually I'm gonna add some rivets too. I'll show you how we do that. And if you're wondering, I add mine 0.75 inches up from the seam line here. And then of course, centered on all sides. So since I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and add my rivets to the straps. So you can see, we can't see because now the strap is within the pocket, but you can feel why we left that half inch overhang here because that's exactly where we're gonna put our rivets. And so I have my rivet tool from Tops and Bobbins and I'm just gonna mark I'm just going to do one rivet above the seam line and then one rivet below. I'm going to do that on this side as well. Adding rivets is optional, you do not have to do it. I just like the look of them, and then of course they add security as well.
is my rivet purse. It's hilarious. I don't know how I misplaced an entire press. Totally not in the right spot. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and stitch down my tag and then this panel will be all done. Um, if you wanted to, you could totally add more rivets up here if you like the look of that or even double rivets and do four. Um, that also looks really great. So let's do the other side. Um, doing the front pocket, the front slit pocket is totally optional. If you didn't want to do that, you could just have regular panels on both sides on the front and back of the bag and you would make both panels like this which is the same way that we made the last one, but we are leaving off the slip pocket. When you're laying your straps, you want to make sure that the rolled edge is straight and not twisted. Just something to consider. All right, and then right sides together. Let's sandwich this guy. All right, we're gonna go to the machine and stitch these together using quarter inch seam allowance. All right, and then just like before, we are gonna butterfly our seam open and finger press it before top stitching. Now we need to top stitch our straps down. To complete this panel, I just need to add my rivets.
if you want to, you can add some sort of interfacing underneath the back of the rivet if you want just another layer for the rivet to go into. And that is totally up to you. the front and the back panels done and so now we are on step 13 and I'm going to clip these together um, so back in the interfacing step I tell you to cut out boxes from the bottom um, sometimes I do it there and then sometimes I wait until I get here because occasionally things can get a little bit wonky but the way that I line everything up to make sure that all the side seams are correct is I'm just gonna match those butterfly seams as my starting point. And you just wanna make sure it gets a little hard because there's so much kind of uh, different heights up in here because of the straps. So you just wanna do the best that you can with keeping everything flat and even. And, um, not stitch, but clip into place. And then now I'm just gonna clip down and around. And so my edges lined up pretty well, but sometimes my bottoms get a little wonky. Like say my seam allowance got a little bit shifted when I was sewing up here, it can make your edges not line up nicely. So that's why sometimes I wait to cut the boxes out until this step, which is, it's also in this step in the pattern. So if you forget to do it, Earlier, I remind you to do it now. And so again, I'm making the tall, so I'm going to cut out the boxes for the tall, but for the wide, it is a different measurement and both of those are in the pattern. And then using scissors, I'm gonna cut these boxes out of both sides of the cork. And then just for more security, I'm gonna add just a couple more clips around the perimeter. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and sew, we're gonna start up here, backstitch really well, sew across down to this corner. And then when you get to this corner, you're gonna keep your needle down and you're gonna push these edges together like that. And then you're gonna continue sewing onto the bottom, across the bottom, over here, same thing, continue sewing. When you get to each edge, you wanna be sure to add some back stitches so that the stitches don't come out later. And if you haven't made any of my patterns or Lauren's patterns, then this might be new to you, but it will create a pucker, but that pucker is gonna help us creating the box bottom in the next step. Oh, and so I'm gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance around the whole perimeter. I'm gonna get as close as I can to this bottom edge and I'm gonna grab the bag and angle it so that this edge is straight and then push the bottom to meet. Add some back stitches and I'm just gonna keep on sewing. So this is what it looks like. It has these weird puckers. 
You can see it's on both edges. And now what we're gonna do to box the corners is we're gonna reach inside the bag and just put your two little fingers out. And you'll see that it makes these two seams line up darn near perfectly. So now I'm just gonna pinch them. And what I'm gonna do is fold my seam allowances away from each other just to cut down on bulk. And then sew across the box bottom with a quarter inch seam allowance. I like to put one clip in there just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then do the same for the other side. Now what I'm going to do is just trim down my seam allowances to about an eighth of an inch. I do like to leave about the top inch the same uh, seam allowance just because I find that later if I want to butterfly this open to reduce bulk while sewing it just makes it easier than folding down a 1 8 seam. And then I'm going to flip it right side out. We can check it out. Poke your corners out. And then, so this is the exterior. Oh, let's see. Here's the whole exterior of the bag. And our side seams are, well that one's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close. And that one is, mm, chef's kiss. And so this is what the bag will look like when it's done, obviously it gives you a good idea. And then the cool thing about this pocket is Unless you have it propped open, you don't even know that it exists, which is why I love this low profile pocket. Even when you have stuff in there, it doesn't really push it out. Unless of course you had something really bulky, then it's gonna be noticeable. But when the bag is in use, having the lining with the interfacing and then the pocket with the interfacing, it just keeps everything nice and flush. And I just love that it's just kind of a hidden pocket. This, um, Pocket is optional. This is the sunglasses pocket that is attached to the lining. So if you don't want to make this, then just skip past this part of the video. But ha I have my pocket cut. And as the instructions say, you're just going to fold over the top a quarter inch and then stitch across. But another thing that I like to do on some of mine is I like to angle the top edge about a half of an inch down. So I just taper from the top corner down to the bottom corner. And then I'm gonna stitch or um, fold down a quarter inch. I'm gonna use some double stick tape here since this is a quarter inch thick, just helps. It's a lot easier than trying to measure and blah, blah, blah. So, peel that off. And then now, Fold it over a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna to go to the machine and I'm just gonna to top stitch this edge down. Figured you didn't need to see that step, but here it is just top stitched down and then it has this nice folded edge on the inside. The next step is you just fold it in half. 
And then you can see this is the shape of the sunglasses pocket or eyeglasses, reading glasses pocket. If you want to, you can leave it squared off at the bottom or you can round it. I personally like the look of the rounded edge. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to I need a new blade. I'm just going to trim like so. And you just want to cut it on the fold, yeah, the folded edge. The raw edge is what's going to be in the in between the lining pieces, so this will be covered up later. But I just want to cut on the folded edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go stitch down along this edge here. So this is what it looks like. You can see again this raw edge is still open and my stitching isn't perfect and my cut, my circular cut or corner cut isn't perfect either. So I'm just going to trim this up with some scissors. Trim my threads and I'm going to put some glue on this raw edge here just so that when the bag is in use, it doesn't fray. And so I'm going to be using Aline's Fabric Fusion. Um, I have a whole video on the glues that I use and why and edge coating. So if you want to see that, find it on my channel. Okay. So now that that is done, I'm just going to set this aside for now. Whoops. And we're going to work on our pocket overlay. Now the pattern calls for you to cut out just this rectangle, but if you've seen anything that I've made, I always like to angle my corners. So I'm going to do that as well, just to give it a little bit more flair. And so to create the opening in here, which I'm going to do it this way. So that way my prickly pear cactus is right side up is I'm going to flip it on the wrong side. And I'm going to measure in a half an inch from all four edges and draw a rectangle inside. So that is what my rectangle looks like. And now carefully, I'm just going to cut that rectangle out. And I like to use my rotary blade on the long edges, but not on the short ones because I always tend to overcut on those short little pieces. So I generally use my X-Acto knife. And there it is. And now I'm just going to burn it to get all the little fuzzies off. And if you wanted to finish the inside with glue or edge paint, you would want to do that now before moving on to the next step. Now we need to add our zipper overlay, our pocket overlay to our interior panel. And for this step, I'm going to use glue instead of double stick tape. I find that it just makes it easier when you have to cut out the interior of the fabric in the next step. So what I'm going to do is just put glue around the outside perimeter edge of the zipper overlay. The reason you only put it around the perimeter line is because later we're going to be trimming out the lining fabric from inside this 
area here. And if you have double stick tape, it just makes it harder to do. So I've found that glue makes it easier. So now using the measurement in the pattern, I'm going to center it from the top of my fabric. Let's do this, there we go. If I can get it, there we go, okay. And then before I fully push or put a lot of pressure on this bottom section, I'm going to add a tag into here. And then now just apply pressure and let the glue dry. And so the tag that I'm using says, I know I can't believe I'm handmade either. I got that from Mormino. I have lots of other tags too that are super cute. May contain cat hair. You look really pretty today. I took forever to make. And then this, my favorite, made with blood and some swearing. Okay, so now that that is dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna stitch around just that perimeter edge as well. And I'm gonna leave tails on my threads and pull everything to the back so that I can turn it around back here and tie them so that you don't see a bunch of back stitching. For now, we're not stitching around the interior, just the perimeter. So leaving long thread tails here, and I'm just gonna start anywhere on my overlay and stitch all the way around. And then when you're pulling your threads off, make sure to leave them nice and long. And so this is what it looks like back here. And then, so we're just gonna pull. And then you can see the loop comes up. I don't know if you can see that, but you wanna pull that loop back through. And then you don't have any threads on the front and you can tie these in the back. This is really common in leatherworking. And I honestly didn't do it for a while just because I was lazy and I don't, I don't really mind the look of back stitching. But because I'm using a contrasting colored thread, I don't want to draw any more attention to where I started and stop stitching. This is what it looks like right now. All right, so carefully now we need to cut out this fabric that's in here. And so had we used double stick tape, this would have been a lot harder to get to, which is why I don't use it until the next step. Having glue, the glue peels off easily so it just makes this a lot easier to do. So I'm just gonna cut with this panel right side up, I'm just gonna make a cut inside that box. And then from the back side, I'm gonna cut just the lining fabric, being sure to fold this overlay out of the way, cut just the lining fabric, leaving about a 1 8 seam allowance all the way around. what it should look like and then so now this is where I'm going to put my double stick tape and I'm gonna be sure this little knot that I created to keep my threads back here I'm gonna be sure to put double stick tape on that too just to hold that in place so that it doesn't ever come undone and so I'm just going to go all the way around the box And so if you're using number three zip tape here, you're gonna wanna make this zipper box more narrow and just be aware of where you're placing your tape because I'm using number five, so it's nice and wide and it'll catch on the tape. But if you're using number three, that would miss it totally. 
So before I stick my zipper in, I need to put my pull on. This zip tape and zipper pull are from Zipper Valley. If you guys have not checked out Alex's products, I highly recommend doing so. And I'm gonna use the zipper jig that I got from Bad Stitches. Um, I will say that I dropped it almost immediately just from this my cutting table down to my sewing table, which is about five or six inches. And this little tab broke off like as soon as I got it. So just be very careful with this because it's, it's 3D printed and it has to be really thin in order to fit the zipper pull. So you just have to be careful with that. And I'm comically so bad at this even with the zipper jig, so don't make fun of me. Oh, well that one was pretty seamless. <laughs> I couldn't do that again if I tried. Okay, so now we've got the zipper ready to go. I'm gonna peel my tape up if I can. And then I like my zipper pull to be on the left side, but if you want it on the right, just flip your zipper. And then we're just going to center the tape inside our hole here. Mine's a little wavy. There we go. And so, oops. And so that's what it's gonna look like. So now I'm gonna go back to my machine and I'm gonna stitch just around the interior. Oh wait, psych. Just kidding, we have to add our pockets. So you need to get your pocket top and pocket bottom. And I'm gonna add Oh, I still have a little bit of overlap for my tape. So what I'm going to do is take my pocket top and lay it across the top seam line here. And then I'm going to fold it back and finger press it out of the way. And an important detail that you want to make sure is that if you can feel with your nail where the inside of that zipper overlay is, you want to make sure that this meets up, that your fold is on that same line because the goal is to catch this pocket whenever we're stitching around that box on the other side. So finger press that. I didn't have enough tape over here to overlap, so I am gonna put some here. And then being careful because this is directional, I'm laying the top side of it right side down, lining up the raw edge of the zipper with the raw edge of the lining bottom, lining pocket bottom. And then I'm gonna carefully fold and create that seam. Again, feeling it with my nail to make sure that I'm gonna catch that edge. And this is what it should look like. And now we're gonna to go to the machine and we're gonna to top stitch around the box here. So I'll see you there. So again, with the long tails and start stitching. When I'm sewing over my zipper teeth, I like to add a couple back stitches just for added security. on the back I was able to catch both the top and bottom of the pocket. I didn't do a super spectacular job on the top but I don't think anybody's going to notice so I'm not going to stress. So now I'm going to pull that top thread through and then double knot it. And then just like we did on the front pocket, what we're gonna do is fold this pocket top down 
to meet the bottom. I'm actually, because my stitching's a little bit weird around the zipper overlay, it's not gonna meet up all the way, so I'll have this excess, which is fine. I'm just gonna cut that off. But I'm just gonna add a couple of clips. And then now what we need to do is we need to finish this pocket. However, this is where our birthing hole is gonna be to birth the bag through. So we're gonna leave a really wide birthing hole along the bottom here. In the pattern, I say to leave at least one inch over on either edge. So you pick your poison on that. You know, actually I saw Lauren do this method in one of her recent videos where she folded it up before she stitched it. And then when she flipped, when she flipped the bag through, it was already like a nice folded edge. So let's try that. So I'm gonna flip that bottom and then I'm gonna do the same thing. Oh, I thought I messed up my tag. I'm gonna do the same thing to this side here. Normally I would trim this down before, but my scissors are over there. We're just gonna leave it. Okay. So, leaving the birthing hole, I'm going to stitch from one side. And if you can, I don't know if you can see from back there, but if you can, you're gonna try to peel the lining away enough to expose the zipper and then sew over the zipper end again. Just again for added security, that way if somebody manhandles the bag, it's not, the zipper's not gonna go anywhere. So it's a little bit crazy, my stitching, but you can see I caught the edge of the zipper. And now I'm gonna flip and do that on this side. Oh yeah, see, look, I didn't center my zipper great at all. So uh, I have a lot of zipper to sew over on this side. Okay. So this is what it looks like. There's the inside. Alrighty, so we are now ready to assemble our linings together and we need to add in our sunglasses pocket. So I'm going to measure four inches up from the bottom. Just lay it here on the side. And clip it. And then I'm gonna lay my other lining panel right side down on top. And slide the clips on. And then we need to cut the boxes on the lining panels as well, just like we did on the exterior. So you can see just, just clipping it, it's off a little bit. So, I'm gonna try to just move this around, fix this. There we go, okay. So just like before, depending on what size bag you're doing, check the pattern because I do make it a little smaller, the seam allowance for these boxes, just because the inside, we want the inside of the bag to be a little bit smaller than the exterior so that it lays nicely. Cut these boxes out. And then same thing, like with the exterior, we're gonna start sewing up here. So all the way down, back stitch well, and then do the pinch method. And keep it going all the way around.
Yes. Alright, so I just need to trim down my seam allowances. Okay, so now we need to nest the lining and the exterior. Here's what it looks like on the inside, if you could see it. Cute little sunglasses pocket hanging out. Um, so before we move on to nest, we need to make sure that we open up our interior zipper. Very, very important. And now what I'm gonna do is, with my exterior right side out, I'm gonna fold my straps down and I'm gonna put it inside my lining. Um, the front of my bag is where my tag is, and I'm gonna make sure that the lining pocket goes towards the back of the bag. But that's personal preference. Again, you do you. Um, the Y Taste Steel Tote has a second um, interior zipper pocket, and the tall, as written doesn't, but if you wanted to add the second one, you can go ahead and do that. So this is why I left the top of the seam allowance the same size, that quarter inch, because I like to butterfly at this stage. I feel like it just sews nicer. If I can actually do it. There we go. And so I always start on my side seams and then I'm gonna clip those. Oh. And then hopefully I kept my seam allowances correct and this one looks a little small over here, but if my seam allowances are correct, then this should lay nicely, but we shall see. Okay. So I'm just going to go down, go around and ease the exterior of the bag in. And because the exterior is a little bit bigger, you will have to kind of push it down because the interior is shorter so the exterior doesn't fit in it but that's intentional all right so far so good All right, looks like I did a pretty decent job. Okay, so there we go, we have it eased in, and now what we need to do is just go to the machine and we're gonna top stitch. And I always use a quarter inch, but if you want to, you can use a half inch if that's what you're comfortable with. And then we're gonna flip it through our birthing hole down here and then top stitch. This is an angle I've never used before, but I kind of like it. Let me know if what you think of this angle, if it's too far away. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to start top stitching. And I'm going to top stitch on the inside. So I'm just going to keep this side up, and I'm going to start top stitching here. If you wanted to, you could, if you have one of these um, extender thingies, you could remove that and then top stitch around your machine. I'm gonna go to one of my side seams.
so we are all top stitched and now we just need to flip through our birthing hole here and try to be careful not to rip my stitches but we'll see oh yeah obviously i did not trim down my uh, top edge So I'm going to separate the two and I'm just going to poke my corners out really well. My fingers here, just get everything nice, kind of check it out. Looks good. So I'm going to pull, okay, I'm going to pull my pocket back out and see if this method works. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So as soon as as soon as I pulled it through, now I have these nice folded edges. And so now I can just top stitch right across that. That's so handy. That Lauren, she is a good resource. It is kind of a pain in the butt because I have a lot of um, excess in there or like the corners are really thick, you know? And again, my scissors are just out of reach. So my pocket will just be a little bit angled. Now I'm just gonna stitch this pocket, this birthing hole closed. tuck my pocket back in and then I need to push my lining inside of my exterior. I'm actually going to go over here. So I forgot to push these corners out while my birthing hole is still open, but you can just roll the seams and then they'll pop out. So now we just need to tuck the interior into the exterior right up here so you can see. And I like to do that by grabbing the one side and rolling it. I'm just working my way around. I need to get some clips. Okay, so we've got that all nice and clipped. And now I'm just going to tuck everything in. See, can you see? So it lays nice in there. It's not baggy or saggy, which is great. I love that. And this is what it's going to look like. I'm loving the Art Deco by Juicy Juice inside of this. I had uh, my followers on Instagram choose the lining. It was actually two Juicy Juice options, but I wanted a mustard to match these little flowers on the end of the prickly pear cactus. All right, so the last step 
to finish the tall taste deal is to go around and top stitch just around this top edge here. All right, so I took my table off because I want to stitch with the cork side up. And then another thing that I'm gonna do, because I don't have a cylinder arm and I don't have a lot of space under my machine for my bag to slide, I'm gonna prop it up. So I have just this notepad and then a magazine and I'm just gonna put it under the edge of my machine, under the feet, and then that gives me about an inch of wiggle room under there, which will help me when I'm sewing the bag, especially the clips. And the clips might still pop off from sliding under. I don't know, we'll find out together. But, so I also switched my thread so it's not contrast, just because this is, the majority of this is a beige color and then the inside is yellow, I just, I don't know. Top stitching always makes me so nervous. So I switched to a thread that wasn't contrast color. And so using an eighth inch seam allowance, I'm just gonna slowly top stitch around the top of the bag. I hope that you enjoyed this sewing video. It was a lot of fun to make and I hope that you really enjoy the pattern and I would love to see what you come up with and your creativity behind making the bag. Um, as I was recording this video, I thought about other ways that you could potentially make it more unique. You could do pieced panels or um, the inside works great with wax canvas and then you don't have to interface it. I love doing that, of course, because I hate interfacing. Um, but yeah, there are so many ways that you can make this pattern your own. And I would love for you to join my sewing group. The link is in the description box below and share your makes so that I can see them because that's my favorite. Um, until next time, I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you enjoy this pattern. Talk soon. Bye.